I'm starting the review with a look at an unfinished design that I'm working on when I get a few minutes here and there of the Australian Aboriginal artist Albert and I can never say his second name Namatiero anyways those of you who are in Oz will probably know exactly how to pronounce his name and I love his work because he's not afraid of color and the reason I'm showing you this is because I don't worry about things like meandering whip lines under the fills mainly because by the time if I'm doing three layers they won't show. I'm going to go into view, show, selected color only. And I'm going to go for the first color, OK. And I'm going to hide the image and you can see all these peculiar whippy lines going everywhere. These are deliberately drawn in but as I said they don't bother me. It's only when I'm doing a regular embroidery design that I worry about run lines showing under loose densities. Now this one I think did fill solid all the way through and you can see the light pale blue I think it was I can't remember now over the darker color has toned it down and now we go and look at select a color only, select the top one, select the third one and tell that OK. And this is the layer that gives the definition to the mountain. View, selected color only, down to the tan. OK. Now that this has gone in, it's taken down some of the strengths of this original shadow and this is under shading the dark one underneath let's find view show selected color only and we come down to palmetto was this palmetto one two three four no this is slate blue and let me just tap on it you can see I've put some up onto the mountain side. There it's just a drawn line. Up here it's just drawn lines. Here it's the start of the tree line. And here, as you can see. So let's just click off that. View. Show. Selected color only. OK. Not an awful lot of this color just the amount that I wanted and that's acting as an under color to shine up through the other colors here we go overlaid on here overlaid a little bit up here and then added here this color came around as far as here and then this one continued around here view selected color only okay now one of the things I use is the fill direction to give me the feeling of where it is I'm going and this looks that might be a stitch on edge which it shouldn't be no cancel Hmm. It's got underlay, that's why it's showing like that. I do try to remove all my underlays. And there are times when the program overrides me. Like that one. That hasn't. That hasn't. That's okay. So here this is a gradual incline and then it rises then we have a little flattened area then we have a jutting rock this one is a sloping surface this one is a rock face 
this is a rock face on the side. Is it on the side? Can't remember now without the image. Okay, so I use my angles to give direction. View, selected color, and come down to French Navy. And there it is. Show, selected color only, and come down to the purplish color. And there it is. Now you may wonder why a purplish color. Well, Albert's very fond of purple. Purples and blues. Let me just check that object details. Yeah, that's fine. It seemed a bit lumpy. And I thought maybe I'd forgotten to set my fill number two. Fill number one gives too definite a pattern and I don't want that. Okay. View selected colours only. Top one down to palmetto green. And I've put the green over the tree line. Could actually do with being a bit lighter, but it um, ran the risk of being too light. And just up the side here has got to go a shaft of very light coloured shale and then it's got to go up over this bit as well. View show selected colour only highlight that one hold down shift that's the one I want down there okay now I've put in the modelling for the tree line break so if I tab on that one you can see there it is there and then pieces of it some line work very little fill mainly inside the trees is the fill I seem to have lost a big shadow or have I? okay view show selected colour only top down to this one. Now this needs to be toned down over here. That's fine. This has got to have its shadows put in and it's got to be toned up. I'm going to bring back in. This is what I mean about being toned up. It's almost the perfect colour. In polyneon it's called persimmon. Now the only way I can show that this is rock and it travels in a given direction is by using my fill angles. This fill angle is slightly different from this one. This one is slightly off the true vertical. The same here. These seem to be growing out of the side of the mountain. And this, if I blow this up, when I put my next layer on, <coughs> it will be the undershading before I put the final colour on. And the same here. So you use your fill angles to give you direction. You don't worry about the travel line the yeah, the travel lines. They're a pain in the neck, but you can't get rid of all of them unless you're willing to sit there and manually digitize every single line and I don't know about you but I don't have the time for that and if I was free motion embroidering this I would probably just scribble all this anyway I'd have this to give the sense of direction but anything that's in the shadows now that would probably be scribble so if you're going to do loose density fills for colour work, don't get too hung up on the whippies. Because by the time you've done three layers and you've got down to your basic density setting, which in my case is going to be around 
they're not going to show anyway. This is going to be full density. Okay. Well, now that I've shown you this, and I've still got areas where I have to put another layer on, for instance, this has got to be lightened. And so has this bit. This has got to be lightened, but I wanted that persimmon underneath so as it will give the colour above a glow. And you can see it's covered in jump stitches. Some of them are colour changes. They're not all colour changes. I travel where I can. Where I can't, I don't. And if that means sitting at my machine with a pair of scissors, that's what I'll do. It's a little bit like painting by number. Now if I hide the stitches, you can see I've used the colours in the design to put my blocks of colour in. The painter has shown me where the highlights are and where the low lights are. I can't put all the colours that are in this. I'd be here forever. And I still haven't quite made up my mind what this is along the top. These will be done in persimmon again and I'll probably go over the top of that with chocolate and then have the dark colour for where it's a deep shadow like in these faces. Here it changes from that very rich red to this I was going to say sandy colour, but it's not. There's still echoes of the red in it. But it's more orange and yellow ochre. With little bits of green that have obviously grown up in crevices, as in over here. And here, the areas of light green than the front of the trees and I've no idea what type of trees they are. Although looking at this bark, yeah, they look as though they might be gum trees. So, and I know he was very fond of his gum trees. So probably not too far off the mark with gum tree. And I'm going to raise just a little bit of highlights on these this tree line. Not much. And I have to soften out this ridge that exists here. Which means putting on one more layer and fingering it up through what's already there. And I'll probably do that in a soft beige. Something like this one. And you'll notice I'm not using a thread chart. I'm using the Pantone chart. And the reason I'm using that is I want the colour and I'll simply eyeball my threads. Okay, now that I've looked at this and I've shown you how I use fill directions, how I use undershading and top shading, we'll now go and take a look at yours. Now the other thing is you mustn't be scared. When you do something like this. Trust in your instincts and just go for it. Just do it. Do it as a painting by numbers. It's thread by numbers. And where you've got changes in direction, use your fill angles. That's why they're so handy. For instance, flat top surface here. I've taken it straight across. This one is slightly rounded. So the dark shadow is different angle from this piece here. It's still got to have other colours on it. I've got to put the little bits of highlight on this clumps of trees and bushes. And these have got to have another colour put on top. And then these, this will be done in yellows and greys. The greys will calm the yellow down and give the effect that I want. And here in the water, I'll just introduce a few little bits of 
the beige colour, not much. Bits of green down here and here. And then just lay in a loose density fill of a lightish blue to give the effect of this, a standing pool. And then this will be graduated. A little bit more blue here, but very, very pale blue here which means I'll probably put the blue in first, then come along and put some white in, and then just put streaks of white through the blue, and here will be blues and greys and the white. And this will be the beiges, the tans and the rust colours and persimmon here, the bright red of these. Right, so that's how I put together a thread coloured design. Now we're going to look at the first entry I received. So I'm going to close this here and I'll see you all in a minute.